Hi guys, Cameron with Home 2K9. And I wanted to get a quick discussion down. It might not be quick actually, because this is really, really important information. I don't know if we'll have anybody able to tune in this morning. It's kind of early. It's a gorgeous day in sunny Southern California. For those of you who do not know who I am, I am a balanced dog trainer. I have a boarding training rehabilitation um, business here in North County, San Diego. And we deal with some pretty heavy duty dogs. Uh, we take in puppies, we deal with basic obedience training all the way up through some pretty significant rehabilitation for dogs who are dealing with aggression and reactivity problems, fear and insecurity uh, challenges. And then we see this thing called anxiety all the time. Anxiety is so prevalent in the dogs that we receive here for training that it's, an, it's a conversation absolutely must be had as to why is this cropping up and what do we do about it? So for those of you who are unfamiliar with separation anxiety and this concept of a dog who struggles to be left, um, a lot of times what that will manifest is uh, in, in instances where it's even a few moments you've stepped out of the room, or it could be that your dog exhibits these symptoms when you leave for work or you leave for several hours at a time. And typically it's destruction, it could be potty issues, it could be barking and whining. Um, it runs the gamut of really obnoxious and unproductive behavior that, that make our lives very stressful. Now, the thing that really needs to be talked about is the fact that separation anxiety, that title, allows us to label the dog much easier. Hi Nicole, welcome. It allows us to say that the dog has the problem, right? And I really wanna shift the dialogue around this thing. I wanna change the way we talk about separation anxiety because separation anxiety is our problem. Separation anxiety comes because we created a togetherness addiction with our dog or we perpetuated one if we take in a dog who already struggles with separation anxiety or togetherness addiction and we didn't recognize that we needed to take steps to teach them to be separate. So this happens really easily with puppies because puppies have no frame of reference for why it would be better and more lifelong productive for them to be comforting on their own, to be independent and self-soothing. We have to teach them that skill the same way we teach people that skill. We teach children, go play, go entertain yourself, go read a book, right? We teach children, go to bed, calm yourself down and go to sleep on your own. I'm not gonna lay here and rub your back for you until you're 27 years old. So puppies need that same conscientious approach from us that we realize the life skill needed down the line is going to mean we must put them away. We must put them in the kennel and give them separate time. We must teach them to self-soothe and be on their own and cope with when we can't be there with them because that's going to happen. And when we don't do that, it's that addiction component that I want you guys to recognize is so consistent through our species. When we, ha when we have an addiction and we can't get a hit, not that I know this because I've never had this problem, but I have known people who've struggled through addiction. And when they couldn't get a fix, they were destructive, they had tantrums, they were uh, not thinking clearly, they made decisions that didn't represent or reflect their best you know, uh, qualities or traits, their general nature. So peeing on the carpet is a fair, out of your tree, I don't know how to deal with the fact that I can't get a hit right now of connection with people, is a very fair and expected response. So is destroying the couch or getting into the garbage, right? These are very fair and expected behaviors for dogs to exhibit if we have created togetherness addiction and not taught them how to be okay on their own when we leave for several hours or minutes at a time. So I wanted to really start to shift the concept here that separation anxiety is your dog's problem because it's not, it's your problem. We cultivate that addiction by not turning our dog down when they demand attention from us. We cultivate and we feed and we deal to that addiction when we make a big deal about coming and going. When we say we're going to miss them desperately and we can't believe we can't take them to work with us and 
We are super excited when we come home from work and we make a big deal about reuniting with our dog. We are feeding that addiction every time we take our dog into the bed before they've earned that privilege and allowed them to sleep with us as a young puppy. We feed that addiction every time we second guess ourselves about putting them away for a crate nap and instead we bring them along with us in the car ride and they've, they've not spent two seconds away from us all day. We create that experience for the dog that they have to be right with us. They don't know how to be separate from us, okay? And that separation anxiety then becomes something that we resent. We even get rid of our dogs because of it. And then they end up with cumulative stress and compounded anxiety because nobody taught me how to be in the world by myself and now they're moving me around to something I don't know like I did know my last situation. And the cycle goes on and on of building more anxiety, more stress, more perception that things are unstable insecure and they can't cope on their own. So let's talk about it as togetherness addiction. Let's take ownership of the fact that we are the dealer dealing our dog's attention at the wrong time. We are rewarding our dogs for things that are not impressive, that shouldn't be reinforced, and that are perpetuating the dog's belief that they need to be with us in order to get that fix of a free paycheck of free attention, free emotional energy that they don't actually have the skills to handle. They're not equipped for it. Some dogs tolerate this mistake much better than others. There'll be certain dogs who can absorb that emotional struggle and can handle our uh, constant doling out of connection and the lack of teaching them independence. Some are naturally more independent right? And this is true of human personalities. Some will be able to move away and take time to themselves when they know they need it independently and authentically as just a part of who they are. But a lot of dogs struggle a great deal with not having that skill naturally built into them. And so they're responding as puppies to the environment and to the fact that this this doling out of energy and connection and this constant need for us to call them into engagement with us and to have affection and emotional connection. They're responding to that as the only thing they know about how to exist in the world. And if you don't conscientiously pull that back and teach your dog, your puppy in particular, how to be separate and independent, how to cope with themselves, self-soothe, be calm, you start a cycle of addiction that is extremely hard to get out of. It's just like trying to break a cigarette habit or Coca-Cola habit, whatever it may be. Togetherness addiction is one of the worst challenges you can put before your dog. It's one of the most detrimental things you can create in your dog. Addiction is miserable. It isn't fun, it isn't comfortable, it creates a lot of stress and anxiety. The dogs have no clue why it's happening or how to get rid of it. So this absolutely comes back to us. It comes back to you as the handler and the owner and steward of your dog to recognize that if when you step away, there's whining, barking, drama, destruction, potty problems, you name it, that this is an issue that you create and that you can work to eliminate, okay? Your dog has no idea that this is not in their best interest. All they know is they're extremely uncomfortable. They are not settled, they are not calm, they are not peaceful, they are not confident, and they are not comfortable. So when you see these behaviors, you need to reach out for the tools that allow you to teach independence, and you need to withdraw all of that emotional energy and that constant need for connection with your dog and you need to reroute it somewhere else. Nine times out of ten when I see togetherness addiction in a dog, it's something that's reflective of the owner's struggle on their own to be comfortable independently and as an individual without taking from other sources to fill those gaps. We're all guilty of this. We all struggle with this. We put pressure on our marriage relationships. We put pressure on our significant others. We put pressure on our kids. We put pressure on our friends to fill these gaps. 
and to, uh, to make it easier to be in the world, right? So we don't have to be on our own. We don't have to figure out how to be independent. And when those moments of loneliness, we don't have to cope and figure out how to self-soothe. If we go out and we grab at all those resources and we put pressure on all of those people in our lives, and we put all of those expectations on media and, and you know uh, everything else to fulfill that, to entertain us, we continue to spiral out. We don't build a skill that inevitably will, will come due, right? The time to have it will come due. So it's, it's a very similar correlation of what's going on with your dog. You're perpetuating a togetherness addiction if you don't intentionally teach them how to be okay by themselves, if you don't recognize you've cultivated and created this problem and you now have to change behavior patterns and relationship associations to undo it by dialing off that fix, no longer being the dealer who's paying out that addictive substance of your attention, your physical touch, your emotional energy, things that your dog honestly does not understand naturally as a canine. They don't deal in those substances, so it is not natural and authentic for them to know how to process copious amounts of it. Again, some will handle it better than others, but so many of the dogs that are coming in for training with me lately have massive separation anxiety struggles. And it is really, really devastating to watch them detox out of that addiction when their owner leaves and then to watch them struggle back in the context of being with their owner where that original addiction relationship exists and the anxiety that instantly starts to brew again because they don't know how to be in the context of that relationship without that nagging sense that they've got to get a hit all the time. So this is on you guys, this is on us as dog owners. We are feeding that addiction. We have to stop. Separation anxiety isn't something that just happens to your dog. You cultivate it. Either you adopted a dog who already had it and you now are responsible to rehabilitate that dog and get rid of it, or you yourself created it in your puppy or in your adult dog that you adopted by giving them that constant expectation and pressure of togetherness and not teaching them how to be on their own. So I'll wrap it up here. I really, really hope you guys will share this out. This is an extremely important topic. Every single dog that seems to be coming across the path here, especially within the context of balanced training. Trainers who will actually say no, set boundaries with these dogs, and help to create detox, help to implement patterns of training that eliminate this stress and teach these dogs how to be on their own. We are all seeing uh, togetherness addiction come through like wildfire. It is such a prevalent problem and our dogs are suffering immensely for it, especially when we don't recognize that there are tools and resources in place to help eliminate it and address this as the serious issue that it is. So stop feeding that addiction. Dial off that attention and that energy. Send your dog away. Refuse to engage with them when they demand attention from you. This is your dog seeking that hit, seeking that bump, seeking to get that fix because it's all they know how to exist on and they must detox from it. On that note, it's gonna look ugly before it looks better. If anybody's ever tried to quit something, if you've ever tried to ditch a cigarette addiction or an alcohol addiction or anything of the sort, you're gonna know, or if you've watched someone go through it, you're gonna know it looks uglier before it looks better, right? We send people away for them to deal with that ugliness. We send people away for them to struggle through that discomfort and that detox process. It's a lot of the reasons why board and train is so powerful. Why dogs come here because they need to detox, they need to hit a reset button and get to a place where away from that person who's cultivated that addiction, they can learn to be okay in their own skin on a certain level. It may not be perfect after a short few weeks, but it oftentimes is dramatically different. And again, I watch these dogs struggle so much through that detox process only to get back together with the owner and in minutes there's that anxiety present again because the togetherness addiction is an association of the relationship. It's on you. It's your responsibility to recognize it and to stop dealing out to your dog, all right? 
super, super important, you guys. So thanks so much for following along and sharing. We're going to continue to come back to this topic. I had a request specifically by one of my current board and train clients to go over separation anxiety, why it happens, how to get rid of it, and the number one ingredient is to stop paying attention to your dog and giving them that fix of togetherness. You've got to send them away. You've got to create separateness. You've got to give them moments before and after you leave and arrive where there's an ignoring of that dog. They need to learn to cope with the excitement of your arrival and your departure. They need to learn to cope with being on their own even though you're in the same space. Giving them tools of place and duration work and a lot of the things that we do here and promote so regularly, that's how we're getting rid of togetherness addiction. Teaching dogs to be separate, not together, all right? All right, I gotta go get some dogs out and start training. Thanks, you guys, you're fantastic, and I appreciate you watching. We'll do some more of these very soon, okay? Have a great day.